one of the things I said is that it's important to ensure that your sample represents characteristics of the population. So in other words, if you're trying to test <coughs> internal controls over cash disbursements, right, you're not going to start with um, purchase orders, right? Purchase orders are not, purchase orders are initiates, is, a, is the initiation process um, or the initiation point of a cat that eventually leads to a cash disbursement, <coughs> right? There are characteristics in testing cash disbursements that you'd want to see the purchase order, right? That's an attribute or of, of, of uh, controls over cash disbursements, but you're not going to start with purchase orders to test cash disbursements, right? You're going to start with the cash disbursements journal and select a sample of items from the cash disbursements journal and tie those back to the, the uh, three documents that I talked about, right? So you want, but you also want to make sure that your sample includes the entire population. That when you, when you start, when you take, I'm sorry, when you're making that sample selection, that you're, you have the entire population. So again, you want to make sure that it represents the entire population and that you're including the entire population in there. Um, in terms of selecting it, you have, this is where understanding your client comes in, right? And this is where uh, understanding the transactions, understanding the, the various documents as well as journals that are included in that business cycle. So remember when we talked about both the sales and <coughs> collection cycle and the acquisition and expenditure cycle, one of the first slides we, uh, we talked about was what, what constitutes audit evidence in each of those cycles? What, would, what files and documents will auditors use as audit evidence? So you would, and again, understanding how, comp, how your client records their transactions are important because that is going to help you identify <clears throat> that you are getting a representative sample, what documents drive the, the transactions, so that you are uh, selecting the appropriate documents to, for your sample selection. So an auditor has to be very careful in designing and approaching uh, the sampling process and selection, as well as then evaluating those results. You can't evaluate the results of a control if you don't fully understand the control. Because if you don't fully understand the control, you're not going to know what constitutes an exception or a deviation from that control. In order to minimize uh, the sampling risk, obviously you can adjust your sampling size. So if you think about risk, right, the more information you know, that should reduce your risk. So the more items you look at, if you are, if you plan your sample approach uh, appropriately and effectively, that should also help to reduce and minimize your risk. And use the appropriate sample selection method, right? So use statistical sampling. Statistical sampling is going to minimize your risk versus non-statistical sampling. So that's how you minimize. Just your sample size and use the appropriate sample selection method. So a 